Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today our video is on what we did to make the top for this great little arts and crafts table. Uh, and you can see that we did a, a live edge finish on it, so we're going to show you what we did and how we made the top for this. So let's get started. So this board is going to be the top of our little arts and crafts style table and we wanted to do something called a live edge so that means that you have to have a board that's wide enough uh, or that you can glue together so that you get a natural edge along one side and if you remember back on some of our videos when you're cutting wood there's uh, depending on whether you cut it in the spring or sorry in the summer or the winter determines whether the bark will stay on and there's a little trick for that and you won't find that anywhere but here and that is when you cut a tree in the winter um, the bark will stay on and when you cut a tree in the summer the bark will fall off eventually and the way to remember that is summer skin and winter coat and the coat of course being the bark now that's how you remember that so this tree was clearly cut in the summer sometime now these the, the edges of these are quite rough in fact you can see there's I just peeled off a bit of bark here and there's even paint on it because normally they don't care what happens on the outside bark because most people are going to trim this right off but you can make some very nice looking pieces with the natural edge. So what I've done in the past with these things uh, is often get little bits of sandpaper and just work at sanding them by hand because there's not really much you can do. Now there are some flapper wheels and things like that and to be honest I haven't tried those they might work fine um, I just have never had them available when I've needed them so I've, I've often done this by hand but one of the tricks that I learned a few years ago and I learned this by accident was to use a drill a portable drill with a, a wire wheel on it now I'm sure you've seen these things in the past you probably even have some and they're just a little wire wheel they come at different di different diameters and basically they just insert into the chuck of your drill and then you can clean up whatever kinds of things usually you're cleaning up metal or something but I decided to try and speed things up a, a few years ago and use this on the live edge of some wood and before I knew it, it was actually digging into the wood and creating little grooves. It was cleaning up the wood, but it was creating little grooves. And at that point, I decided that I'd either ruined the edge, and because all these little grooves, I was never going to get out, or it would be so tedious sanding them that it wouldn't be worth it. So I actually kept on going, and I discovered that I actually like that little finish, that little micro grooves along the edge of the live grain. And then I discovered some number of months or even years later that other people had discovered the same thing or done the same thing. Um, so we've all sort of discovered this live edge treatment and that's what I'm going to do today. You need to be very careful with wire brush utilities. You need to make sure you're wearing excellent eye protection because these little wire brushes come off and of course you're spewing out uh, wood products as you go along too so you need to be very careful with eye protection with these and I prefer to do this outside but for this demonstration I'm going to be doing it here in the workshop so let's have a look at cleaning up the live edge with a wire brush finish now I'm going to be doing this uh, more from the back uh, on this and watching the monitor as I go along but you'll get a bit of an idea just how this works and what I'm doing and for this situation I'm actually using a corded drill now you can use a, a, a battery powered drill if that's all you have uh, but I found that with a corded drill you actually get longer better power unless you've got a very big 
um, um, cordless drill, um, and I also found that with a with a corded or sorry a cordless drill, I was going through a lot of batteries, so it became a little bit tedious. So if you've got a corded drill, this is best for it. So let's go ahead and get started on cleaning up this with the wire brush on a portable drill. So there's a very tight view, a very close up view of what I've just done and I don't know if you can actually see in this angle how these little, these little grains, these little rivulets of, of wood have been torn away and now there's like little, little micro grooves along there. Uh, but that's how I finish it and you can actually, depending on the, how heavy the wheel is, you can get um, very coarse wheels uh, and also you can get fine wheels and a finer wheel will basically just polish this I'm using a much coarser um, wire brush it's a coarse hard brush thicker harder bristles and that's what creates these little lines in the edge here so I'm going to go along now off camera and finish up this and there is an area here of concern let's, look, let's, have, let's have a look at that now this area here, and I'm standing behind it so you can see it better, this is actually cut off and it was straight uh, because th that's where this actually hit one of the blades of the saw so, uh, at the mill. So if this actually got cut off so it's actually flat in here. I'm actually going to go in with a knife and just pare this away so that it doesn't look so, uh, I, I want it to look more natural. So I'm just going to do that with a, a knife and a chisel and just ease that. And this is all part of woodworking. You learn how to do all of these different um, things to, to help embellish the, the look of your, of your project. Now off camera, I finished up the other side because it was almost done and I flipped the board over and I've started to do or I've actually finished this side as well and I think you can see on this side how those little you can actually see through the the black and the the light there how these little rivulets go so the next thing we need to do now is to sand the top of the board and it's going to be ready for finishing now I've taken the top and I've sanded it down uh, and sanded the sides I started off with 80 grit, I went to 120, and finally finished up with about a 180 grit. So it's all ready to go. I've removed all of the dust with a tack cloth, and I'm ready to finish it. And for those of you who have been watching our videos, you've probably already guessed that I'm going to use Osmo. And I'm actually just using a, a tiny bit of it. You can see it in there. Uh, it won't take much at all, maybe a teaspoon. You apply it very lightly. This is actually a German product uh, and it's 80% sunflower oil. So it's a very natural, uh, a very natural thing to use. I use gloves. There's really not much need to use gloves for something like this. It's actually, this is actually food safe, um, but I just uh, like to use gloves on it. So let's get started and uh, start applying some Osmo here. Now one of the reasons that I like this product so much, uh, it's really bulletproof to put on and it gives a very, very nice finish. You put it on very, very small, very thinly and in fact you need to actually put it on against the grain you need to rub it against the grain when you first install it or first apply it uh, and then you need to finish it up with rubbing it with the grain so that's what I'm doing right now is using these circular motions to make sure that I get it into all of the pores you can see that you just use a very small amount of it
There and there's the final coat. This is the first coat and we finish up the first coat by applying a very very light coat and just running it with the grain. And you can see how this has just brought the grain of this wood out just lovely. And all of this Got to make sure that it's a thin coat everywhere. There. Now that's good. This is 24 hours later and the Osmo is dry and hard on here. And it's amazing. I put the, the, the top here on some of these uh, little painter's pyramids that I have. These are great little things. I've lifted it off the bench so you can see a little bit better. Uh, notice how the that edge that with the... Uh, maybe a bit difficult to see but how that edge has really come to life so I'm going to go ahead now and give the second coat of Osmo to this and I don't know if you can really see this I don't think there's uh, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon in there very very tiny bit of Osmo that I'm going to be using today for the second and third coats uh, that I'll put on, I'll put the third coat on tomorrow and again, you, you do the same thing as you did on the first coat. You go in a circular motion because you want to get the Osmo deep into the grain if you can. And, and then you finish up with the, long, with the long strokes like that. So I'm just going to go ahead now and do that. And uh, we'll speed this up. But really, this doesn't take any time at all on a project this small to actually go in and hand finish this. Off camera, I gave this top, uh, I've actually given it four coats now of Osmo. I uh, probably could have done three, but the first coat it absorbed a little more than I expected, so I wanted to give it one last coat to make sure that it sealed well. Now, the, the, last, the last step in this that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some wet sanding on this, and I have some 1200 grit somewhere here, there it is, some 1200 grit uh, sandpaper and I'm going to wet sand at the top of it then I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to apply uh, some wax to that. Now the top right now, and I'll give you a close-up look of it, the top right now is very nice and if you feel it, um, it it feels smooth but I want it to get silky smooth so that when you touch it you actually feel the silkiness of it. Right now it looks tremendous uh, and I want it to feel tremendous as well so I'm going to do some close-ups now so you can see what wet sanding looks like and a final polishing. So to wet sand, there's my 1200 grit and it'll say on there uh, somewhere it'll say 1200 grit. Uh, now all I do is just drizzle a little bit of water on the top and I have this uh, sanding thing and this is kind of a padded area here so it buffers it. Now the reason we use water is just to help lift the material off and you don't want to sand very hard with this. This is just to, just to ease the top and anytime when you move to another area you try and move the water with it and you can actually feel as you're sanding you can feel a difference instantly. It just makes such a tremendous difference and I just go back and forth with the grain a few times you don't want to sand through the Osmo or whatever material is you have on there. I need a little bit more water down here, and this is almost done. That's that's how much wet sanding it takes. It's very, very little. You just want to make sure you lubricate it all so that you don't go too quickly. Now I'm going to take the dampness off of there and the wax I'm using is just a, 
It's actually a paste wax. What am I using here? Don't even know the name of it. I think it's a tree wax. There it is. Tree wax. Um, nothing fancy. You can buy this at uh, most furniture or finishing stores. And we do the application the very same way we applied the Osmo. So we put it on in a circular motion. I've got a, a nice soft cotton cloth here and that's dry and all I'm going to do now is just polish it and when I do it will give this top I can actually feel when it comes off it gets slippery and that's just it's like glass it's absolutely like glass it's just a tremendous way of finishing and it still allows you to see all of the grain of the wood but you can see there's a little bit of a there's still a little bit of a sheen to it you can see the reflection of that light and so this concludes our video on finishing the top of the arts and crafts style table and this is one of a three-part series uh, if you're looking at only this you'll want to look at the other two parts as well uh, the construction and the finishing of the lower carcass of the uh, of the arts and crafts table so that's what we do to finish the top I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web thanks for watching